Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 401 for Monday, October 30th, 2023. <music> Greetings, folks. And welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians. Our sponsor for today is Banzoogle, where you can go and use code GigGabPod at Banzoogle.com to get 15% off the first year of any subscription. Here today in Durham, New Hampshire, I am Dave Hamilton, and this episode's going to be a little bit different because the scheduling gods said I could only have two of the three of us that I wanted here, no matter how I put the Tetris together. So Paul is uh, unable to join for today. However, as promised, I wanted to review the all clear in ears this week that we promised you from last week. And so I figured that none other then having Andy Swanson from All Clear would be a great option. I will use this opportunity to tell Andy and all of you about my initial thoughts and impressions, uh, no pun intended, of the All Clear in ears. And then we're also g- going to hear from Andy about All Clear and his career. Andy, thank you so much for carving out the time to take with us today. Man, it is my pleasure. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. I, I do have to say, talking to people about this um uh, podcast i have to say you did put together the best two-word tongue twister that i've ever come across because i cannot spit out gig gab correctly oh dude yeah it's 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 a trick and it it comes from so we've been doing the show almost nine years i've been doing another podcast for over 18 and that is mac geek gab try to work that one out yep Yep. <laughs> uh, I'll leave it to the experts. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like anything, man. Practice. You got to get your reps in. It's just That's how it right. goes. That's you know? Right. Yep. Yep. Um, so speaking of practice and getting your reps in, it, it, let's, let's, I want to rewind a little bit before you started All Claire, but also I think, I think in parallel to All Claire, you, you are a musician as well, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I started playing music um, young. Uh, I think, let's see, I mean, I, I suppose it's the same with everybody um, who's in music. You know, you you always watch these shows and they're like, oh, I've been wanting to do music all my life. And they're 11. Sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, OK. <laughs> OK, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah. And and then, of course, every band bio that you see it, especially drummers. I mean, we can pick on drummers because I think that's what they're universally there for. Um, hello. <laughs> Well, I'm just, how, how often are you the butt of the joke? Oh, that's fair. That's fair. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That's fair. I, I'm, a, I'm a bass player. So the only reason drummers are, you know, the butt is because bass, aver, bass players have considered themselves one higher on the pecking order. But I don't think that's true. That's it's not true, certainly yeah. among circles of drummers. So, yeah. well, uh, Dave Grohl kind of changed that whole thing. That's, that's fair. You know, yeah, sure. he really did flip it upside down. And, yeah. Yeah. He's like the mayor uh, of rock and roll too. What a, he really is. Yep. Yeah. Everybody gets yeah. along with him. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but for me, it was uh, early. It was, it was rap. Um, I remember sixth grade, it was raising hell. You know, of course, Aerosmith yep. is what, what kind of made it uh, appropriate for, for white kids to enjoy rap and hip hop and kind of brought us into the fold there. And then Beastie it, Boys. I was going to say was, Aerosmith became, came before the Beastie Boys in that, in that evolution. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, at least it was more, I mean, it was prominent. It was, it was bigger. I think I'd been listening to stuff before then, sure. but it, it, that was kind of the big, yep, the big thing. So I remember my dad just happened to have a direct drive turntable, you know, and a realistic mixer and trying to scratch and stuff. And, it wasn't really until high school that I started playing. Uh, I, I was going to say a legitimate instrument, but anybody who actually can use turntables I was, well. I was just going to say, you were already using a legitimate instrument. You may or yeah, may not have is. been using it legitimately. That, that's, the, <laughs> that's the difference. That, I yeah. don't know. I mean, I, what's, what's legitimate anyway? Like if you were making music and, and making yourself happy with it, I yeah. think that's legitimate, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, then I started, started playing bass. Um, and I kind of styled myself the, this was, um, I think it probably was Primus. 
Uh-huh. You know that yeah that made made me be like yeah this could be this could be something um flee of course give it away now i mean just that yeah right and just yeah, the, yeah. the timing he had on there was not just a yeah they flee was was always phenomenal to me cuz he really and still does he knows how to play a bass part he backs off when it needs to be backed off right i mean he just goes to 16ths or 8ths and he's just fine with it or yep. he can carry the whole thing and it's true yeah he is very musical when it it comes to crafting and playing bass parts yeah. you're right he yeah. he he is in the way when you want him to be or when he wants him to be but but when it's appropriate and then he yeah. backs off yeah 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 it's it's not like some other other players like even even Les Claypool who I still love is still the main thing all the time. Yes. You know, and yes. yes. Flea just has a way of moving in and out. So and you know, you've got other in, understated I, I wouldn't say understated. You've got like Robert Tujulio, right, yep. who's yep. known for Metallica, but I came to him through Infectious Grooves. Uh, and, yeah, of course. Right, right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, suicidal tendencies and stuff which is just base and then you get infectious grooves where you're just like, oh my gosh, this guy can really, really play. Yeah. So it's just kind of fun watching guys kind of who are comfortable moving in and out of like, I don't have to be on all the time. And that was probably an early lesson for me because I, I, as a bass player, you are trying to carve out space. You're trying to, you know, you kind of are the the weak leak in the band, I would say, you yeah. know, you can be replaced by a Moog. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I think it's important, you know, if you call the the bass player and the drummer, the rhythm section of a band and for, for this conversation, let's do that. I mean, I know yeah. we can, we can define it in many different ways and in, in, in scenarios that's, that's correct. And, uh, but you know, you, you are there, to play the spaces as much as you are to play the notes. Um, and, yes. and you've got to, you got, you've got to know that. And it, and it's not, it's interesting because it's not a lesson that most of us, myself included learn early. Y- you know, you're yeah. learning about playing all the notes because you have to, you got to develop some technical proficiency and, sure. and so you're in pursuit of that. And so the things where there are all the notes wind up being, you know, uh, attractive. They're the, the the sparkly, shiny thing that that yeah. captures your attention because it's where your mind is focused. But eventually, hopefully, we each learn. Oh, wait a minute! There, there's there's something about the the notes I didn't play. Yeah, yeah. It is it is that it's it is that space. It's the it's the groove, the feel. The f- yeah, you know, yeah. and how how the space actually is what creates the feel. Um. So yeah, I, I started off wanting to be flashy, arrogant kid. Just, I think you kind of have to have a certain level of arrogance to to decide to make a career out of music to start with, and sure. then you kind of evolve, you know, to more of a supporting player and become okay with that. And um, but then went to school uh, for audio engineering, uh-huh. and that was my thing. I wanted to be an engineer, um, and in classic form. Uh-huh. Got out of that, started engineering, and hated it. I, I mean, <laughs> so not unlike many other people in many other disciplines throughout life. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It, I. I mean, I love the producing aspect, but the the sitting there making sure you, I'm I'm that close enough for jazz guy, right? You, to sit there and obsess over microphone placement, I'm like, let's just get it in a can, man. Come yep. on. So yep. it was a yep. really not a great engineer. Uh, yeah, from, yeah from I, I could see that. Yeah, impatience in that specific way. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So um, kind of moved more on to, to creating music um, and really enjoying that side. And, you know, I think when I was young, that was the goal was to be a musician. Um, we're just living in Seattle. This was, you know, 93, 94. So it was yep. the heyday of, of Seattle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, music, big time. Yeah. Um, and, you know, then decided 96, you know, to get married. And you didn't know it at the time, but you look back and you see, okay, there's a fork that you made a decision to choose one thing over the other. And that's not 
you know, you can look at it as a good thing or a bad thing, depending on where you felt your dreams were going. Uh, but for me, it was just a different thing. Yep. And, you know, then kind of set those aspirations aside and, and went into more of the marketing side. Um, so yeah, I was then marketer for a number of fairly big companies. It was a producer at Nintendo oh, in Seattle interesting. for a while. Oh. Um, then we built a, I left Nintendo to build a product, a healthcare product for kids who have diabetes. And we sold that to Bayer healthcare. And then I was a global marketing manager for Bayer and commuting from California to New York three times a month, which is a long commute, even if you're in LA. Yep. Um, and then just kind of got tired of that corporate thing. And so sought out a couple companies. I'm back in the audio field and have been kind of working with them ever since. I worked with a company called Digital Audio Labs. Uh, they were uh, well known back in the day uh, for broadcast audio, sound cards. Uh, they had a sound called, called, card called the Card Deluxe. A V8 was a system I wanted because it was a PC based thing sure, that competed sure. with Pro Tools. And um, that was amazing. And so then kind of met these guys and Kind of hit it off. So started working with them, doing some product design and a couple of things. We developed a, a personal monitor system for musicians, uh, it's largely into the church house of worship space. Yep. Um, and then they kind of introduced me to Alclair. So Alclair had started in 2010, I want to say. Before that, they were building OEM for another company. And um, I kind of got connected with them in... And it wasn't too long after that. And they had a few models at the time. And I'm just going to be honest with you, listening to them, I was not impressed. You know, I'm listening. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But then as a bass player, um, they have one. So you were still, called, I, it, it, and I want to kind of keep tugging on yeah, this thread, yeah. but it, you were throughout all of this and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but even during your, your time in the corporate world, uh, still playing bass oh, yeah. in in bands and all of that good stuff everything actually bass guitars bass slash guitars yep. keys um and yeah so doing all that uh when i left nintendo to be the vice president of this small healthcare startup before we were sold to bear um I actually bought about 80 grand in audio gear kind of as a signing bonus. Good for you. Type of thing. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So now it, most of that is in my son's room who's 21 and a better engineer than I ever was. Sure, sure. And um, it's actually how we, we keep him from moving out um, because <laughs> he's never going to replace all that gear. Although we are uh, kind of over or we're, we're we're rethinking that policy realizing okay at 21 maybe maybe we're, maybe, we're creating a problem here. maybe he could take the gear with him <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah maybe 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 <laughs> yeah 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 we are we are as listeners know you know kind of dancing on the edge of empty nesting in and out of it uh over the past few years and and so yeah it's it's a it's a tough transition if you get yeah. along with your kids and clearly it sounds yeah. like you do it it is not easy uh, you know, no. it's, it, it sucks saying goodbye. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I mean, it's a yeah. good thing. Don't, don't get me wrong. Like, it, you yeah, know, no. it, it means you've done well, like, you know, but, and and he is definitely our most expensive. So I have five, oh, wow. uh, the oldest is 23, our, okay. our daughter. And then he's just turned 21 and he's our most expensive because he's a drummer. And when we started looking for a house, when we moved out to uh, Charleston area you can't be in an HOA when you've got a drummer, you no, know, you know, that goes, that violates little, the, yeah, you gotta have a little bit of space if you really want them to be able to practice. And so that means moving further out, they got to have their own room now is in the engine recording. And so he's got all the gear and sheesh, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I understand this and I, I thank my parents for it fairly regularly. Cause, yeah. cause they got it too. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's, yeah, it's all, it's all actually all good. And it's, it's, there's really nothing better than sharing something that you love with your, with your kids. Um, and actually when I left 
Bayer, one of the things I started was a, an amp company building guitar amplifiers. And I haven't done a whole lot with sure, it. Sure. We have a couple models and we're now coming out with a new product that um, basically we're building just for my, my son to say, all right, here's, he's interested in engineering, going to school to be an electrical engineer, electronics engineer. And um, so we built a device that's a 500 series rack unit. Um, we'll do it. We'll do a full rack unit as well, but it's a it's a reamper and effects loop, yep. you know. So you can put run your DAW tracks through your guitar pedals, and it just plugs in on your desk. We actually put DC power jacks on it, so you don't have to wall oh. wart. You just everything right there. So you know, building something like that because I grew up. My dad was a farmer, and the first job when I got married was kind of following following his footsteps. My dad dad got me this great job, which you know, was night shift, uh, harvesting almonds, you know, and it was, we were married for, for a month. And then I had a seven, eight, seven, a 7 PM to 7 AM night shift during harvest season, which was nine weeks straight without a day off, you know? (laughs) (laughs) So thanks dad. (laughs) I'm just hoping I can do a little better. Yeah. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, so let's, let's, let's circle back here to, cause you started talking about all clear. You you came in here and you didn't like the way things sounded uh, and worked yeah. and all of that. So, and it, and it wasn't that I didn't like it. It just didn't, nothing wowed me. And then there was a model we still saw called the CMVK, the Crank Master 5000. Okay. Um, and it's designed for bass players and drummers. And it was really the, still in the market, really the only tool that I can think of that is a pure tool. Like it, it's for bass players and drummers. And I put that in. And it's, you just, that's, it's that permagrin. You just can't stop smiling because the, the low end went down below. There's no filter. So it just goes down 10 Hertz, you know, and so you start to feel it a little bit, you know, and as a bass player who started playing bass because of the low end, you know, coming to bass in a weird way through hip hop, that sure. bass was such a and yeah, low the, end was a huge deal. The extra low end. Right. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 And then you start playing gigs where they put you in a direct box, you know, and you're like, ugh. Yeah, you've removed everything. So this all of a sudden came, brought that back. And then I was like, OK, all right. So then that kind of, you know, formed my thinking in that the other models that I w- just wasn't huge on wasn't that they weren't good. It just wasn't for me. And so we've worked really hard at from the perspective of not everything's going to be for you. It doesn't matter how expensive, how inexpensive when you find the one your head starts moving you start bobbing a little bit it's like okay that's the one yeah yeah, yeah. so it, you know i i came to you because i have been in in pursuit and and it i i thought maybe i'd never get there i i, I had i had faith uh i've been in pursuit of a custom fit good quality mm-hmm. in ear that we could recommend to our listeners who were getting started with in ears. You know, you can you can go and buy the KZs and and you know yep. use Universal Fits and and get yourself out of the gate right with it. And and that's amazing that that even exists today because it didn't exist when I started heading down this path twenty years ago. None of the tech existed. I mean, some no. of it did, but I really had to like work really hard. And I say it on the show all the time that I am ever thankful for my bandmates at the time for tolerating me kind of re-engineering the way I had to listen and all that stuff. Cause I was really, really bullish on getting myself migrated to in-ears and it probably took a year, but I was like, I was determined to make it happen. I am always looking for ways for our listeners to get there without requiring that level of obsessive determination that right. I had. Right. I, because I yeah. know how much better it can be, but I also know that it is a change. Right. And, yeah. and so investing a lot of time and money and all that stuff uh, is, is not, it, it's not going to be a successful path for most people that you need to get there and realize how great it is. And so because of that, I, like I said, I've been in pursuit of, of the, the affordable, good quality custom fit in here. And I was out to lunch with our mutual friend and, and a uh, guest a couple of times here on the show, Mike Dias and asked him, I said, Mike, mm-hmm. tell me, is there, you know, an affordable, good quality? Who would I talk to? 
And without even taking a breath, he said, all clear. I said, that's fascinating. I have a tab open in my browser with all clear. I, you know, I've been on this search. I didn't know how to reach out to him. I said, it wasn't entirely clear who they were or what they were doing. And I said, I was actually going to ask you, Mike, about yeah, all clear. Awesome. Uh, yeah. And he's, you know, he brought it up before I did. And so obviously he made this introduction and, 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 you know, fast forward here we are, but I, I don't want to fast forward. I want to take a minute and and describe what I went through recently as I started testing these, because I've used all manner of them, the hard acrylic, the soft acrylic, you know, two driver, 12 driver. And uh, I, I made an error in my testing because these showed up on a Friday. I had just taken I was in the midst of performing a theater, a run of a theater show where the band is on stage. So there's like, once we start going with an act, I can't right. really like I, I, and, and where they had me, I was dead center upstage. So if I was messing around with anything while I wasn't playing, that was going to upstage everybody else. Right. Like sure. the entire audience is now going to look at the drummer who's doing whatever it is he's doing and they can't figure it out. Right. So I have to be the very best audience member Right. Sure. And, yeah. and direct people's attention to where it should be, which which is its own interesting thing. The worst part for me is, of course, I know the show and there are there were the shows the run ended. There were, were a few surprise moments in the show. And I, I had to make sure I wasn't looking at the upcoming surprise before the audience was supposed to know <laughs> that it was there. Right? You know, So it, it was it, it was it required a lot of focus. And and these arrived on a Friday. We had three shows left. We had that Friday and then two on Saturday. And it was the first show that we were doing after a 13 day break in this run, just because of the way the logistics of the theater schedule worked out. So I was like, okay, this is a little nerve wracking coming in, playing this show that I haven't played in two weeks. You know, the, our, our final performance before that break had a couple of hiccups in it, um, mm. you know, logistical hiccups. And so it was like, all right, we're, we're going to, we got to nail this one. So I get there, I had to get my drums reconfigured I, the, the way things worked out. We talked about it in the last episode. Uh, and so I spent a little time doing that. And then I, I popped the ears in and I had, tr I had tested them out at home for a little bit, but I was like, okay, let's see. And my drum sounded completely different. I was using my ultimate ears, UE 11s uh, for the, for the run. And everything was like, Oh man, like it's not that these sound, I, I can't even be objective about whether these are better or worse. It's like, this is not home. And mm -hmm. so I thought for a Friday, for this Friday night, getting back in, I'm staying with home. So I did. I, I, I played my UAE 11s that first night, got everything. Everything went great. It was like, okay, the next day, here's what I'm going to do. So you had sent me three sets to test. And mm -hmm. the one that I really was focused on for the purposes of this experiment uh, was the, the, your dual driver, because your dual drivers are three ninety nine yeah. uh, for you, you know uh, for folks full custom who, full custom three ninety nine dual driver and what I love is that they are three ninety nine whether you get them the normal dual driver or you get them tuned for low end and I can compare these prices to you know what you pay like I think it's like five forty nine at Ultimate for a regular dual driver mm -hmm. and then. And then I think it's six forty nine or six ninety nine for the ones that are tuned for the low end, and so and yours are three ninety nine no matter what the same, and mm -hmm. and so like like from that standpoint, I was like, yes, this is this is what I'm looking for, but I made a critical error, Andy. I did not go with the dual drivers for the afternoon show on Saturday. I went with the six drivers. I went with the spiral. Um, yep, yep. And, condolences. And, right. And so I, and, and, and to be fair, the six drivers are eight ninety nine from you folks. My UE 11s, which are only four drivers are, uh, I think 12, 9, 11, 99, 11, 12, 12, 99. Yeah. 12, mm -hmm. yeah. About 1200 bucks from ultimate ears. And so even still like way, way less expensive, but not serving the purpose of the, the path that I wanted to head down. But still, this is the choice. Choices were made. 
And uh, and so I played the show with the Spires. I, I had to I just flattened out my EQ on my, uh, you know, on the send to my ears and, and just retuned things and got it sounding like, OK, these are these are my drums. Wow. There's a whole lot more clarity. That, that was really the problem that I had the night before was I, I it was just like, wow, the, I, I'm hearing way more articulation than I'm used to. I, this is going to throw me off. I need to remember how to play this show first before I start messing with you know, other <laughs> elements. And, uh, and I, I, that, and that choice was the right one for, for sure. But, yeah. uh, but I went with the spires. I don't know why I, I know that logically I should have started with the duels and then gone to the spires for the evening show, but I went in the reverse. So I did the spires for the afternoon show, took our break, had dinner, came back and said, yep, I got to do the dual XBs. Uh, for the evening show. Now, the dual XBs, dual driver, three ninety nine price tag. The XB, uh, f- for listeners who don't yet know, uh, is the the dual XB is the the extra base is extra how I inter- interpret that. Okay, great. So yeah. I I did the uh, dual XBs. There was I wouldn't say there's less articulation. Um, there was less of. It, the the sound stage wasn't as wide as yeah. the as the spires. Sure. Now, really, and again, I I should be saying this in reverse that the the dual XBs sounded fantastic, and had I started with them, I wouldn't have known any better. Right? <laughs> like, sure. I, I they they have excellent articulation, fantastic low end. I could hear everything I needed to hear. I was able to keep volumes low. Uh, and, and, and play and just hear everything I wanted. Uh, and it really took me like by the end of sound check, I was no longer adjusting from mm. using the spires to using the dual XPs. I was like, Oh, this is going to be great for the show. I'm going to be super happy with these. And I, 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 I'm glad that, that I went through that, uh, because I can tell you folks and Andy, you're included in you folks, but I mean all our listeners. Sure. That these dual XBs are fantastic. And at three ninety nine, I've never used a custom fit in ear that's going to touch with these things too. And mm-hmm. I'm I'm so happy about that. Uh, the, the spires are absolutely a step up, a, a huge step up. Uh, you get a, we try to be very careful that you know, and 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 maybe this is. We're we're not your normal company. You are not. That if if the dual XPs work better for you, we're not going to try to sell you into the spire. Um, you know, you, you, you we recognize these things are expensive. Uh, it's yeah, even three ninety nine is expensive. Even three ninety nine. Yes, right. Absolutely. Um, you know, we're getting to a point where we're getting a little more used to spending that uh, AirPod Max, right? I mean. <laughs> It, well, everything costs more these days. So yeah. yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, we work really hard. And when you, you look at the line, we we say we've got multiple models at multiple price points so that you can find what you need. Yes. Where some other companies, and it's understandable, um, would be, well, you're a bass player, you need to spend, you need four drivers. Well, what that means is your bass player, the first model we have that's appropriate for you is four drivers. Right. It's not a statement on drivers. It's a statement on our range. Right. 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 Um, but you're, you, you don't have to say that. You're able to say that with your dual driver unit at yeah. 399, the dual XP. Yeah. And there is a Versa dual that is. I, and actually, I, I, I want to ask this question. What is the difference between the Versa dual mm-hmm. and the dual XB dual? Because they're both. They both have two speakers per ear, two drivers per two armatures per ear, I would assume. And I want to talk about some of the tech of this yeah, sure. a little bit later, but but they both have, you know, two two drivers per ear, same price. Is it just a tuning or is there a hardware difference inside them? Yeah, no, it is it is uh, both. Okay. So in in the most general terms, um a earphone, headphone, in ear monitor whatever you want to call it can be either a flat response or contoured. Those are the two phrases that I would use. Um, So different people have different needs. Um, Contoured is what we all change our cars to. 
right? You get yep. in your car and or a rental car, and the first thing you do is you go to tone and you boost the bass and you boost the treble a little bit, right? You scoop you give, it out. Give yourself the disco smile. That's right. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Yep. So that's kind of what we're used to. Um, and and that's you know why I beats, you know, became such a big deal because it was someone said, We don't have to tune these flat. Right. And we can tune these for how people want to listen to music. And it was it was a revelation. Right. But it's something we've been doing forever. Sure. Sure. Our yeah. Stereos. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think beats overdid it with the low end, but you know, it's a, it's a neither here nor there. It depends well, on, you know, depends on what you want to listen to. Right. You're talking to a bass player. So uh, <laughs> <you know. laughs> yeah, I'm, a, I'm a drummer. I'm supposed to like extra, extra low end. I, I grew up uh, when I didn't even have a drum monitor. So the first time I had a drum monitor, like a wedge where they fed me kick drum, Mm. I was like, what the heck is that? Like, I, I, that's way too much low end here. The guy's like, well, oh, I thought you wanted to hear kick drum. I'm like, my kick drum's right here. Like I can feel yeah. the low end from my kick drums. I, it, over time I have actually come to really kind of like it, but it, it was an and adaptation. It, is, it, yeah. I, it actually, and an obvious, the, the style of music you play. So I was just totally. at an event and they asked, can you help with the EQ? We're having trouble with the room and the drums. And so I only had five minutes, but I figured, let's see if I can get some tips here. And um, this happened to be a, a church that was um, tend to be more towards the gospel and R&B side. And they couldn't quite control the sound in the room. And I was like, all right, this is controversial among some engineers, but I'm high pass, low pass filter guy, you know? Okay, sure. You put them on everything. They are efficient. Uh, yes. Yeah. And they allow you to control where things are, especially in a live setting, although even in a recording setting, high pass, yeah. low pass can be really helpful. Yeah, it, it it can. So, I mean, that's everything's generalities, right? And sure, sure. not, but so I just went through and I just showed them just kind of sweep that low pass or the high pass filter. I said, this is your R and B gospel sound. The kick is tighter. You know, you roll it, roll off at like one twenty five. Yep. Said so if I open it up here, now it's rock and roll. Now it's white white man music, right? Because now it's the sub and the low end and it's less tight. And, you know, just saying, so, you know, talk to your guys. It You may change per song, you know? Interesting. And and you, you're doing something that's kind of that rock and roll vibe. We've gotten used to having a sub and having that a lot of that low end at that cushion. 40, 30, 40 hertz, you know? Yep. But other styles are much more reliant on the beater. You know, you roll off some of that, you get that tightness. And so, yeah, it, it's, um, I don't know where I was going with that. It's just. No, I, I, it, I was asking, so I will bring you back. Um, the, the Versa Dual versus the Dual XP, yeah, yeah, is yeah. there a hardware difference or is there, is it, yeah. is it, is it simply, and, and I don't mean to oversimplify, I don't mean to be dismissive of it, but it, is it a, an EQ tuning difference or a hardware difference in the, in the models? It is, it is both. So ah, there, okay. it is, it is a hardware, different drivers. Um, Got it. So one of the things, the, the kind of, when we're demoing with people, I would say really the only thing you can do to compare two companies to each other is looking at drivers, comparing a six driver to a six driver. Sure, sure. But the only thing you probably should never do is compare drivers. I was just going to say, you got to compare sound. You got to compare sound. Now, most people are going to buy these without listening to it. So more than that, you're you're um, at the mercy of some marketer's language trying to describe yeah. what, this, what this sounds like. Um, but yeah, so, you know, just like two guitar players, you know, meet each other and they would say, uh, well, what kind of amp do you have? <sighs> well, I've got, I've got two speakers. Oh my gosh. I've got two speakers too. Same amp. Right. That would never happen. Uh, no, right? there's, it, there's, there's so way too much. Different. There's too many. Well, and, and then there is the, the ultimate variable of one's fingers. Like, Oh yeah. Uh, like totally different. Yeah. You know, like, one of my favorite it, it, early memories, I bring it up on the show occasionally was reading like the ask a pro column in modern drummer. And somebody asked Bill Bruford, what symbols he used on an album. Like, you know, even at that point, it was like 20 years prior. And he's like, man, sure. I, I don't quite remember. He's like, I think, if if I'm you know remembering the time frame, it most likely was this ride symbol. And then in his perfectly cheeky British way, he went on to say, "However, it's really about what happens between the drum stool 
and the yeah. edge of the stick. <laughs> you know? Right. It's like, it's yes. up to the player. It's how you play the symbol. He's like, so don't be so obsessed with buying the same symbol I had. Think about how you can get that sound out of, out of your symbol. If yes. that's the sound you like it, it, you and know. actually yeah. going back to the, the, the kick drum EQ thing, there was two different drummers and the guy who wanted me to EQ the sound was playing and he hit a ton, right? I mean, he's mm -hmm. just like, he's, you know, Dave Grohl on Smells Like Teen Spirit. You just hear, you just hear the indentations left in the, the sure, drums, sure. you yeah. know? Um, and then the other guy, when he comes out, who's playing was much lighter touch, you know, and is much more controllable and it's same kit, same mics, totally different. All right, folks, let's strike a chord here. You're in the biz of making music, right? Not tangled in website woes. So why not leave the digital strings to the maestros at our sponsor, Banzoogle? Picture this, your music, your vibe, your style, all rocking out on a website so sleek it might just drop its own album. With Banzoogle, you can dive into their jukebox of customizable templates and craft a digital stage that makes even the top charts jealous. Cash in without the middleman, whether it's that latest single, must-have merch, or hot ticket to your next gig, you can sell it all with zero commissions. Banzoogle believes in your talent not in taking all your coin every time you go to sell something. And hey, you want to grow your fan base to rock star levels? Banzoogle's mailing list tools are the real MVPs. You can send out newsletters that'll have fans doing an encore in their living rooms. The solos don't stop there, folks. Integrate your Bandcamp, SoundCloud, YouTube, and more without missing a beat. And if you ever feel off-key, their musician-loving support crew is jamming for you seven days a week to help you out. And here's that set list sweet spot. All of these killer features come with plans starting at just $8.29 a month, plus hosting and your unique custom domain name. It's like getting the VIP treatment without the VIP price tag. So, listen, slide over to banzoogle.com, rock a free trial for 30 days, and jam out with promo code GIGGABPOD for 15% off your first year. One more time, that's banzoogle.com. Promo code GIGGABPOD, G-I-G-G-A-B-P-O-D. You can keep the beat and you can keep it neat with Banzoogle. And our thanks to Banzoogle for sponsoring this episode. All right. So uh, when we first talked, uh, you know, we talked about the company. We talked about the process. And you said, okay, well, you know, do you know how to go and get impressions made of your ears? And I said, yes, uh, this is something I've been through uh, several times. So, yes, I do. And, and folks, we will, uh, if we don't talk about it today, in the very next episode, Paul and I will talk about the process of getting impressions made for yourself because there's a lot to, a lot to think about when you are approaching this. You can, you can spend, uh, just by calling different audiologists, and that's who you would go to as an audiologist, you could spend anywhere between, I wound up spending $65 for two impressions this time around, uh, I could have spent two hundred and fifty dollars for two impressions this time around. So, do, do your yeah, if the phrase "do your research" was ever more relevant, it's here. So, uh, but I've also had my ears scanned by a digital scanner. Ultimate Ears is doing that, and you made it really clear. Ultimate Ears gives you the option of doing that. I don't want to say it's the only way they're doing it. You can do both. Either is totally fine. Um, you were you were pretty adamant that you liked impressions mm -hmm. better than ear scans. And going into this, what was interesting for me is the only prior to all clear, and I want to put a huge asterisk on that. The only time I had ever received in ears and not had to send them back for a fit adjustment was the time I had used ear scans versus impressions. Mm. Um, all clear changed that. Uh, Great. which is great. I was shocked when I put them in and they fit. I was like, really? Huh? I did not. Ex I expected to tell you what was wrong and to send them back. And, and I, there's nothing from my standpoint as a consumer, there's nothing wrong with that. They are custom fit. You, if they don't fit the, the moment you put them in c contact, the vendor, you know, absolutely at work with them on it. So I, I want to hear your impressions on impressions and ear scans <laughs> and just that whole process of working yeah. with the customer to get it right. So, uh, we started uh, the parent company of Alclair. It's called Matrix. And our founder, Mark Musselman, um, and his brother, Rick Musselman, 
Rick, Rick's the, I would say Mark is the founder of Alclair. Rick is the, the founder of Matrix. Okay. Um, and they have a long family history in hearing aids and hearing health. Not surprising. And okay. Yeah. So what they started off doing was making the impression material that audiologists use. Right. So oh. we still do that. We, we develop the impression material. We sell it to audiologists all around the world. So that's why you like the impressions. Cause you make money on, on, uh, you get to double <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, no. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's a profit deal. <laughs> that's right. right. Yeah. 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 Um, but only audiologists that use matrix material for impressions. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Well, you know, we, and it's an OEM thing, so they wouldn't necessarily know. Got but, it. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, here's the, the, your every ear is so drastically different and i do i do impressions at events myself and I, it's always it, it never ceases to be amazing at how different everyone is there's just no nothing similar um and yet we all hear relatively the same as as far as we know right yeah, I mean, yeah. We, we can't really we describe color blue blue but we both know it's blue, even though we don't know what we yes. actually see. Yeah. When my eye doctor years ago told me, oh, you're a little bit colorblind. I'm like, what the heck does that mean? He's like, well, you don't see red the same way I see red. I'm like, awesome. Describe to me how you see red. Yeah. And he did not like that. So no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, and this is, this is actually, um, so the reason sometimes things may not fit right off the bat. And we absolutely, we have a sure fit guarantee. We work people to get it right. Of course. Um, every, every custom company that I know every of company folks does. does. They, 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 otherwise you're not in the custom business. That's right. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, and it's, and it do, is, um, go ahead. No, I was, I, again, I just want to coach our, our listeners. Don't feel bad or, or even hesitant for a second to report right. even the most minor fit thing these are meant to be comfortable in your ears forever and so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and so every ear is so different um and I, i'm trying to think of the right analogy because i usually would use a hand to describe it but that doesn't work so well in a non-visual medium um but some ear canals might be more fleshy okay um, they might have you know a little bit more padding um and some might be hard cartilage and what a scan does a scan only tells you what that closest to the surface piece is whether regardless of how squishy or unsquishy it might be yeah oh. but an impression material and there's various you know everything from viscosity to how much it expands to how long it cures. There's you know so sure, many sure. variables in an impression material, which is also why it could be challenging to fit right, depending someone uses a material that doesn't expand at all and hardens really fast. We don't have any way of knowing that. Right. So anyways, an impression then goes in your ear, the material, the goo, as we, is the technical term for it, and it expands slightly. So it presses up against your ear canal. If there's a fleshy part, it's going to distend that just a little bit. If it's cartilage, it's just going to hit up against it. So whatever we get back, we know that it's taking that part of your anatomy into account where a scan can only do that outside. So, you know, if somebody does say have a fleshier ear um, and they get the scan, they might find it fits a little loose. Yep. Whereas an impression that is expanded slightly inside the ear canal will fit tighter because of, because of that. So we just find the fit rate um, is better. Now that's not, a, it's not at all like an all or nothing, right? Of I mean, course. Of course. It's we, we have, um, I think we're at about 97% fit rate. Okay. So that's, that's pretty high. Yeah. And I would say that when we use, you know, digital scans, they might be slightly less than that, okay. but you know, it's not something people really need to be overly concerned with. It's just, it's just a thing that we've noticed. It's just a thing. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I'm, I'm curious because I did share with you ahead of time that I have had this issue where things needed to go back for a fit adjustment. Um, mm -hmm. and did, did you 
change anything about the process of making my particular uh, shells because you knew that I, I am predisposed to to finding myself in this scenario, whether it's a me thing or mm-hmm. a, like, no, no. Okay. It's always best. You, you start off with what you get. Yep. Okay. You know, and then if we need to build them up, we can do that. If we need to trim it, you know, uh, yep. shave it, shave down, it down just a little bit. Sure, we can sure. do that. Okay. Um, sometimes we'll need a new impression. That's kind of the the worst case. Most of the audiologists will redo it. Yep. Um, if an audiologist doesn't follow the instructions, the chances of it not fitting do increase. A uh, bite block is important. Um, and that's because so you, you put a, about a one inch block in your mouth and that holds your jaw at a even position. So your ear canals are not fluctuating. Um, and it also opens and elongates your ear canals so that the impression material does its nice little expansion. And when you get your final ears, it's going to be a, a perfect fit. It's if you don't fit. use that, yeah. yeah, if you don't use that bite block, um, again, you're not you're not giving the impression material its full ability to expand correctly. It's fascinating. I have, you know, as I said, I've I've had I don't know probably a dozen, maybe more, two dozen sets of impression, you know, impressions done on my ears over the years, and the bite block is something not not every company agrees mm-hmm. with uh, on how or if or when yes. a bite block should be used so th- this is a very company specific thing and i've always just followed the instructions of yeah. you know who wh- whoever's doing this right cuz like you your manufacturing process assumes a bite block was used some some companies are like do not use a bite block leave your mouth closed which seems really strange to me um given what i know about anatomy which is not much And then others are make sure you move your mouth up and down lots during the process, which also like the bite block makes the most sense. And I even had this conversation with my audiologist. What you don't know is I did not use a bite block, but it was because he doesn't have them. But he understood when he read the instructions, he's like, I completely understand what they're going for here. Here's what you're going to do with your mouth and you're going to leave it that way. And here's why you're doing it. And he explained when you do this certain thing, your jaw is going to relax in a different way and it's going to open up your ear and it, trust me on this. It's going to be fine. And and it turns out it here turns we out are. Fine. It was totally fine. Yeah. Yeah. He, he fully grocked it. Uh, That's he, good. Yeah. Yeah. And it, uh, obviously it was, it was okay. And I, and, and, and as soon as he and I had the conversation, I'm like, okay, I feel, I feel confident about this too. The, the chewing one or moving your mouth up and down is the one that I um, if, if a, <laughs> Uh, we don't, we really don't go after other companies at all. It's just not in our nature sure, sure. to do that. But I'm not, I don't if, want you to. Right? Yeah. If they do say that I, that is a, that's a red flag to me mm. um, because it is what happens. That ma- impression material works its way out of your ear yeah, and it's going to, it's going to cure somewhere. Is it going <laughs> to cure with your mouth open, with your mouth closed with, you know, what position is it in when it finally cures? Are they both? at the same spot, probably, you know, not. one ear, yeah. they couldn't, they didn't never went in at the same time. Right. Cause you have to do one ear then the other. So there could be 30 seconds between them and their cure level. So one could be, it's, Oh, int- Oh, by the time you start moving your mouth, that they, they are yeah. at different spots in the, the curing, curing evolution. Process. Yeah. And then it, it works, it works the material out of your ear canals. And you that know, it's, makes, it makes a, sense I, it, when you're on a plane, you, Open your jaw, to yes. pop your ears, you know, and it's kind of the same, same thing, but we'll work with whatever, whatever we get, you know, of course. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it, this is fascinating to me. Yeah. Because like I said, I've, I've been through it a, a number of times and this one, it, I, I think if I can give any advice and it, it's really hard because you don't know what you don't know going in to see any given audiologist, but ensuring that your audiologist understands what these are for and Mm -hmm. what you're going to be doing with them. Like when I went in, my guy thought this time around thought that I was there for impressions for uh, ear plugs, which is not entirely different from this, but a little bit different, you know, from this. And, and I had to, I realized that during our, our sort of, you know, setup conversation and I stopped him and I said, well, these are, aren't 
earplugs. These are for speakers that are earphones. They are speakers that are going in my ear. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, that's interesting. That's different. And then when he said he didn't have a bite block, I said, okay, let and he explained the mechanics of exactly what he was like. I understand why they would want that. Here's what we're going to do to get you that. And I stopped him and told him, I said, in addition to playing music, you know, playing the drums with these, I'm also a singer. So my mouth will be moving while I have these things in and I want them to stay in. And he's like, oh, that's good to know. He's like, I think what we're going to do is, is going to be fine. He's like, but that's good to know. So just be over communicative with your audiologist. Um, I I will say every audio, because I called a bunch, like I said, I found a price range from $65, which is the one I chose to 250, which I did not. Uh, And pretty much everywhere in between, but mostly on the higher end of the in between. None of the offices that I called knew if they did this, the, the, whoever answered the phone was like, you want what? And I'm like, impressions like, yeah, okay. We, we do that. I don't know if we, I, I, we've never had a phone call to do that just for the impressions. Usually we're doing it as part of a setting up for hearing aids or, yeah, you, you know, exactly. that whole process. And like, yeah, let me check. And then they would come back. And say, yes, we do that. And then I, of course, would ask the follow-up question, which is, if so, how much? How and much? So, and so I learned <laughs> to ask them all at the same time because the second question would take the exact same process of the person having to put me on hold for five minutes while they went and consulted with the generally the owner of the practice, which is the audiologist, and uh, and getting a price and then coming back. Okay, yep, great. Let, let's set up the appointment. But yeah, um, yeah, it, it, communicate, 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 because your audiologist, even if they are on a list that a company like All Claire gives you, they're not going to necessarily be as well versed in this as you yeah, would expect they, them to be. They yeah. don't. Uh, modern audiologists aren't doing this, uh, taking impressions as much because even hearing aids are more universal fit now. Um, Fair. You know, it used to be that you would look and they have the big beige. Yeah. You know, ear in. And that's really only in extreme cases now. Most folks, you know, have hearing aids that are actually rad. Like you want them. Super invisible. Yeah. Right. <laughs> They're invisible. They connect to your phones. You can get your ring doorbell notifications, right? Everything. It's I mean, it's futuristic. Oh, yeah. I'm like wanting to have a little hearing loss to get don't right. say that. You better well, knock on wood, man. This no, is, no. This but is true. Here, here's well, what I do want. AirPods, right? We all wear AirPods all yeah. the time now. So it's. What yeah. I do want is the 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 smart glasses that are going to give me like a heads up display on life. Right. To So that the, when I run into. The Tony into, Stark thing. Correct. So that when I yeah. run into you, and this is of course such a basic use of it, but when I run into you at, at NAM or whatever, uh, it, you know, it comes up and tells me, oh, this is Andy Swanson. This is why you know this person. It's like, right. Yeah. Because I'm terrible with yes. this. You know, that sort of thing. I want that, but I also want them to have like the little ear hearing aid style earbuds that pop into my ear to even just one ear to just give me that experience on life because I've tested some of these, you know, current day uh, hearing aids and you're right. They are amazing. I do not want to have to have them, but I, yeah, no, I, I, I'm I, I want the experience. There is, there is an ancillary experience that goes beyond simply you know, reinforcing sound from one's environment so that you can yes. actually hear. And that is pretty magical. Yeah. And in, in reality, a, a company like Apple is going to be the ones that end up winning. Yeah. You know, in this yeah. space, because well, especially now that the, the FDA doesn't require medical approval, because I don't think Apple yes. wants to have to get medical approval for anything. That's a whole different conversation for a, it's for a, a different totally different business, conversation. But yeah. yeah. But it, it does, it does apply in, um, the, uh, you know, we've got other lines, you know, for hunting and shooting, mm. you know, that are designed to enhance the world around you. Um, and you can program it for certain frequencies if you're shooting ducks or geese or oh, hunting deer or whatever. But then when the shot goes off, it protects your ear. It's basically a multiband compressor and it just clamps down on the band that's loud. So you and I. So can these are active. Your, these aren't just these, these aren't active, just passive yeah. hearing protection that that block out your ear. They are active no. in the moment. Yeah. So it's got a little battery, and wow. you know everything. Uh, so and technically, they're hearing aids. Yeah, just know, sort of we, in reverse. <laughs> yeah, because and they're they're maybe not tailored to your audiogram, although they could be. Um, right. They're tailored more towards a certain pursuit, um, but. Yeah. And I'm grateful for a company like Apple because, 
now we're mixing your podcast here, but it's totally fine. It happens all the time. <laughs> they've done, Paul, Paul and I met because of our, our, you know, day job relationship to Apple. So okay. it happens all the time. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Yeah. It's all good. But it, it, they've, they've, um, destigma, destigmatized wearing earphones out. And now, I mean, people are wearing AirPods that are taking your order at your fast food place. And you're like, what is going on here? Like, yeah. Yeah. And, and so, the stigma that goes along with things like hearing aids is decreasing. And that's actually one of the biggest challenges is people don't want to have to have them. Like you just said, I don't want to have to have them. And so people do put them off for years and years and years until typically the wife says, you need to go get an appointment. Yeah. Um, but now we're getting to a point where they can be cool. They'll, yep. Everyone has something in their ears. And now I'm just using an app to tailor it for my yeah. own hearing. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it, it, yeah, it's, it's funny because when I first became aware of, you know, custom fit ear monitors, it, it was, you know, you see it on a video or something. It's like, wait a sure. minute, what is that? that that's a better salute, you know, cause I did not like as a singing drummer, I did not like having to deal with a wedge. First of all, I rarely had one as a kid. You know, I had to hear from the wedges way up front, which you never yeah. can hear. Cause it's trying to come over cymbals and drums. But even when I had my own wedge, like I had to turn it up louder than a snare drum so that yeah. it would it would be louder than the snare drum to my ears and louder than cymbals. And I was wearing earplugs. Like I, I started with earplugs almost when I started playing drums. So th I thank actually I thank Alex Van Halen for that. He he had an interview in Modern Drummer where he said just casually, oh, yeah, I've lost like 70 percent in one ear and 30 percent in the other. And I was like, <gasps> not me. Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> you know, how do I not do that? But when I first started seeing them, they were flesh colored and they mm -hmm. were meant to hide. It, yeah. it, it seemed like the artists didn't want you to know that they were wearing these things. Right. But it was like, this is better than than a wedge, obviously. And and so they were. And now, of course, you can get them flesh colored if you like. And you can get them in any other color and sparkly yeah. and with your logo and with artwork and you can make them fun. So, and, and what we found, you know, the people who want, especially let's say in a church environment where they want to be less distracting, you know, they'll, they'll go for a clear, you know, yeah. that lets the skin tone show through or beige. But what I find is that people in, in the audience or congregation, they stare and they're like, what is in their ear? Yeah. Now, if, if someone has purple glitter, they look once and move on. And it's done. That's right. It's so it's actually less distracting yep. to just go all out because they're like, yep, they have something to help here in their ear. You, you're acknowledging of, it. You're you're yep. putting it right out there and then it disappears. That's right. It disappears. Yep. 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 It's like they're wearing yep. a shirt. Okay, great. I'm going to see it all night. Like, <laughs> good to go. <laughs> right. <laughs> Even if it's a sparkly shirt, like, you, you know, it's like, if, but if somebody came on stage wearing a flesh colored shirt, be like, are they naked? Are they not naked? Like you would spend yeah. a, 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 the, an inordinate amount of mental energy sorting out what this, this, you know, accessory was. <laughs> yeah. It's, this, it's my li life watching the Met, you know, arrivals right on the red carpet. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. Is that skin or skin tone? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's, um, it's fun. All right. So I have no doubt we will have you back on the show because well, first of all, there's a lot of things I want to talk about with you that we haven't gotten into. I know that our listeners are going to have questions for you. Feedback at giggabpodcast.com, folks, by the way. Uh, but before we wrap up here, is there anything, you know, for this first conversation that you wanted to cover that we have not yet covered? You know, I, I would say the only thing I, I was thinking of, we mentioned getting to this and, you know, run out of time as most good conversations do. Um, drivers and we talked about drivers are just speakers yep and in-ear monitors use different kinds of drivers predominantly they're balanced armature they do yep. come from hearing aid technology and there are multiple per ear and so we talked a little bit about the flat or contour and eqing so we can eq with crossovers you know you use capacitors and resistors and different things yep. in between the drivers and then there's certain numbers of drivers and uh People ask often, you know, what's the benefit of more drivers? Do I need more? Why, why should I get six versus three? Is six better? And our response is it's not better. It's different. Um, it just depends on what your use case is. And in our case of the Spire, 
Um, you mentioned some other companies have the, sixes and the and Spire is the six driver six version. Driver. The one yes. that I started with the, the highest end one that you sent me. Uh, that's the one I started with that Saturday afternoon and, and loved it uh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's, so that one is the configuration is uh, for low end, a mid and a high, you know, where other companies are going to do too low, too mid and too high. You know, our art, if you will, when it comes to designing this one was uh, stacking, st you can stack. So then drivers vertically or horizontally, right? So okay. four, yeah, yeah. so four networked together for low end drivers. Since most of our, especially with drummers and bass players, most of our, and let's just face it, modern music is 80% low end energy. So when you have four drivers networked together, they handle that, you know, each driver is only working on a quarter, yep. quarter efficiency, right? So they no, we call it headroom, right? No distortion. It's, you can put your kick, your bass up. You're going to hear everything really well. They won't distort. And then, you know, your mid and your high drivers. They're just working 10% of the spectrum each, and we don't need to necessarily double up on them. So fascinating. I why... would have, I did not know this until right now. I, I suppose I could have researched deeper wearing them. Certainly I had plenty of low end. It was not overstated. It's not like, like my interpretation of beats where it's just like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I have to roll low end off of these. Not at all. Um, I probably even, you know, goosed like a little bit of the low end on, uh, on the overall EQ coming out to my ears, but where I would have thought you had extra high end drivers yeah. because of the, just the articulation and the, the, the width of the sound stage as I perceived it was, was certainly uh, enhanced. And so I, th for that reason, I just assumed there were more high end yeah. drivers in my ears. Yeah. Well, we have another six driver called the Electro, which is four, two lows, a mid and a high, and then two electrostatic, which is a different technology. Okay. Uh, it's a little bit more like a condenser microphone, oh. you know, where you have a charged plate and the diaphragm is always snapping back into place. So it's very quick and it expands the sound stage even bigger. Um, now, when you're on stage, it doesn't matter so much because you, you don't have time to focus on little deep, the, no the nuances, right? right, you're, right. You're, you're not listening to the violin, you know, articulation, you know, that's, that's going on. But in the recording studio, when you're trying to really dial in a early reflection on a reverb plugin or something, that detail, I mean, and it's phenomenal. When I started listening to it, you could, I'm like, oh my gosh, Bono uses a dynamic mic, yes. right? Cause, Cause you could tell. You could tell, you yeah, could hear it. It's a 58 too. <laughs> yeah, or, <laughs> or you could tell the difference in a 58 when he's using an SM7, you know. The, Interesting. The, the, so like, uh, it's, wow. and then I would say, so people say, oh, so it's good for front of house. It's, well, it can be, but for me doing front of house, it's too much information. It's not, I would never hear that detail in the house. It, it, so, it, it, yeah, the audience isn't going to hear it, right? Yeah, so I right. go chase, chasing down. So it's it's helpful to find phase issues and setup type things like that. But, you know, most of the time it's too much information. So, you know, we can and pick that up because there's just a world of information when it comes to, to drivers and driver count. And like we said, that's really the only way people can compare. Yeah. Um, but in reality... It's what you need. If you're a gigging musician, you're playing a few times a week, you're a weekend warrior, two drivers is going to be fantastic. It's going to be what you need. You spend the other money on, you know, better. Well, we always kind of laugh that starting an amp company, it was always, you recognize that someone buys the best guitar they can purchase and then an amp with whatever's left, you know, and then they're yeah. not Eddie Van Halen yet. So they get another guitar. And then like, oh, maybe it's the amp. So then they get another amp. Then maybe it's the effects. And you do all those things before you actually start addressing the fingers. Yeah, yeah. You know, you <laughs> oh, wait, maybe there is yeah. something. There might be this. something to this. Yeah, yeah, There yeah. might be something to it. And so it's the, it's the same thing. Like, it's an expensive purchase. Be realistic, you know, with what your needs are. You need to hear yourself. You need to hear yourself well. You need to protect your hearing. Those are your main things. Yep. And if two drivers can do that, do it with two drivers. You may need to go to three, depending on your use case. Let's say it's a little 
bigger stage or a little louder, you need some little more headroom, maybe that's where you go. We've got people who play huge stages, pro musicians who are using our 13 driver. Does everyone need that? No. No. Would I be able to afford that? No. Right. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But touring musicians, they just call up and say, hey, I need five of these when we want the best. Okay. Great. Great. Yeah. 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 No, it makes sense. Yeah. 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 Thank you. This has been fantastic, man. I, I really appreciate Oh, I appreciate Mike introducing us. I appreciate you taking the time to spend with us. And I appreciate the existence of all clear and the, the mission that you guys have, because I, I like this is, you know, it felt like I was searching for the Holy grail here for our listeners. And, uh, you know, with the, certainly with the dual XB, which I've experienced, and I'm assuming also with the Versa dual there, there it is, you know, and, and again, I'll, I'll acknowledge three. What did you, Go ahead. What did you think of the SD three? Well, that's interesting. So, it, yes, there was a third pair that uh, All Claire sent me, folks. The ST3, which is a three driver per ear thing, yeah. and and you you called this out. You said, you know, I know the Tour, which is a, a different three driver. They're they're both five forty nine, by the way, folks. Uh, the the Tour is probably more in line for a drummer, but there's just something special about the ST3, is what you said. And I'm like, all right, well, m- make the ST3. Like, if you think this is what I you want me to hear them, then I want to hear it. They're the ones in my ears right now, Andy. Um, I did not, if they were the only pair that I had, I would love them on stage compared to the other two that you sent me. They were my least favorite for on stage there. There sure. there's too much articulation, a, too much information yeah. in these to your previous description of the, you know, the electrostatics and these are, Price very differently from the electrostatics because they're different technology. Um, but uh, there was too much information for me on stage. I did, uh, you know, and even just sitting behind my drums playing, it was too much. Uh, but I thought, wait, 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 I, you know, this might become the thing that I want when I'm recording a podcast because yeah. I want extra information. For those who don't know, I actually hear myself on a very slight delay. I've gotten used to it over time because I like to hear what I call the third head. So I hear us after all of the EQ compression and yes, a touch of reverb to make it sound like you and I are in the same room. Uh, I'm used to it. It sometimes throws people off. It's not much. It's maybe, you know, 20 milliseconds or something like that uh, when all is said and done. But um, I, I, these are fantastic for this because of all of the information I get. I, I know yeah. what's going on. So yeah, there, if, if, if I were going to, choose something with which to listen to music, the ST threes would be absolutely the go-to every yeah. time. And that's just, you know, speaks to the difference between like a stage voice, the contoured versus more of a flat accurate. We might say the word balanced. Okay. Yep. Um, presentation. And yeah, so it, it, it just kind of shows different strokes, different folks, different use cases. And um, yeah, we'll, if you have questions, yeah, where can people find Dave, you? you can, yeah. Alclair.com, A L C L A I R.com. And yeah, we're uh, all, we'd love to help people find the right thing for them. And we're not going to try to upsell you. We'll get you in what you need. Amazing. No, that, that, that much is clear. Thank you so much for taking the time with us, Andy. This has been fantastic. Uh, are there maybe three magic words that you have that you might want to uh, share with our audience for? Um, you know, just life advice. Protect your hearing. Is that three? That's three. Yeah. Three. Any, protect any, your hearing. Protect your hearing. That's good. We have three that we like to say here, which uh, since Paul's not here, I will, I will say in his stead. And that is, folks, make sure, like Andy says, protect your hearing and always be performing. We'll see you next week.